Hey everyone, Frank from Aborigine Reptiles back with another video. This week, are you bored of ball pythons? Ball pythons are the undoubted king of snakes and are everywhere. But today we're gonna walk you through a few of the species that we work with that we can recommend make equally, if not even better, pet snakes. So stay tuned. Like and subscribe. The point of today's video is not to bash or hate on ball pythons. They're a great snake, it's just they're everywhere. Every single expo you go to, every website is just dominated by ball pythons. They're everywhere. Um, everywhere you go, um, you'll see them, and we want to make sure that you are aware of all the other python species, specifically Australian, because that's what we work with, uh, that are available to you as a hobbyist or a potential breeder or business owner. Um, the market's pretty saturated, in my personal opinion, when it comes to ball pythons. And ball pythons are also not ideal for that first snake. Many people have them, but if you're an unexperienced reptile keeper, they can be a little bit daunting in terms of their humidity and temperature requirements, respiratory issues, uh, potential feeding issues. Some go off food for a, a long period of time, which could be a little bit unnerving for the uh, a new reptile keeper. All the snakes we're gonna talk about today um, feed readily, are pretty much bulletproof, uh, easy to handle, and um, are easy to care for. So, and all are also within the same cost perspective uh, in comparison to some higher end ball pythons. So let's get started. In terms of Australian pythons, there's a couple of groups. We have the um, Womas and black-headed pythons that we're gonna get into and talk to a little bit about. Uh, we have all of the Anna Teresa or dwarf python group that we're gonna talk about. Uh, there are other larger pythons like the olive python that we won't talk about today because we don't work with them and they're one of the largest species, as well as um, some water pythons. Um, and of course, we're gonna talk about carpet pythons because that is the biggest group of pythons that's in Australia. Uh, we only work with one specific species here, um, and we'll talk to you a little bit about why. Uh, so something to keep in the, uh, mind as well is the cost of keeping an animal. When you're looking at feeding and maintaining, um, ball pythons are great because they do fit into rack systems, um, and they work beautifully there. They also could be in terrestrial cage setups. Uh, but you can get pretty expensive, but you could also go pretty cheap with a rack. So it just depends on what your um, rate is. All of the pythons we're going to talk about today, for the most part, can be kept in both, either or. Um, but the food is the biggest concern. Uh, feeding a snake, depending on how you do it, once a week or every two weeks, uh, a full-grown adult female, specifically ball python, can take a large rat. Um, and that can get expensive, especially if you don't breed your own or have a local breeder who could provide you with a, a cost-effective rat opportunity. Um, so something to keep in mind because rats can get expensive. All the snakes we're going to talk about today, with the exception of one, uh, typically feed on uh, small rats and or large mice. Uh, they also love chicks and quail. Um, that's something that typically you don't see people feeding to ball pythons too often. Um, so that's something to keep in the back of your mind in terms of cost of ownership, especially if you get more than a couple, uh, more than a couple of snakes. So let's get into it and talk you through all the different species that we work with currently here at Aborigine Reptiles. And uh, we'll kick it off first with our largest species, the Brettles Python. So first Python on the list is our Brettles Python, also known as a Centrillium Python um, or Brettles Carpet Python. They are a part of the Carpet Python complex, which are in itself a great group of snakes to work with. Um, we chose the Brettles as the one we wanted to work with um, due to their calm disposition. They do get rather large for a carpet python. I believe they're the second largest carpet python um, species. Uh, think boa, uh, common boa constrictor in terms of size, roughly. Um, so if you're looking for a snake of that size, these guys are a great option for you. Um, very easy to care for, as with all of these pythons um, are. Bulletproof, you can see the setup, um, very simple, straightforward setup, semi-arboreal snake, um, great disposition, great animal to work with. So. So as you can see, Donna is by no means full grown. 
Um, we've had her for just coming up on a year. So this is about a year old. So as you can see, um, a nice size snake as it sits already. Um, they will get about, uh, the females obviously get a little bit larger than the males. They'll get about three times the size roughly, uh, much girthier in terms of snake. Again, think bow constrictor when you're thinking um, full grown size. But these guys are awesome. They're super uh, handleable. They come in an array of colors, um, beautiful contrasts, beautiful tones, depending on the different morphs you work with. Um, and as far as carpet pythons go, a great snake to work with. Um, very calm disposition and will eat just about anything. So Centrillion or Brettles Python. Next snake on our list, the Woma Python. Uh, this is a amazing terrestrial python, again, bulletproof, medium size, so um, more in line with almost the exact same length that you would see with a uh, ball python, but much uh, less girthy. Um, this is not by any means a full-grown adult, um, but lengthwise, it won't get much longer than this. You're looking anywhere from a little bit over six feet um, around that for large individuals. These guys will eat anything. Great feeding response. Some people sometimes get that feeding response uh, confused with being a little bit bitey, but um, they are not. They are great, easy to handle, beautiful. Arguably, I think one of the best looking um, Australian pythons. Um, and again, are, as I keep saying, bulletproof. Easy terrestrial setup, so if you have, uh, you wanna keep them in a rack or keep them in a cage like we have here, um, that's an option. So a lot of great flexibility in their caging. And again, beautiful animals as you can see here. So that's our Woma pythons. All right, the final group of snakes that we're gonna talk about that we work with here at Aborigine Reptiles are dwarf pythons. Um, here I have a Cape York Spotted and a Children's Red Desert Phase. Um, these guys are not full grown, but uh, when they do get full grown, think corn snake, uh, king snake size. So you can have all the amazing attributes of a python in the size of a snake that's you know the size of a colubrid when they're full grown so uh these guys again simple setup you can use racks you can use cages they are somewhat arboreal they do like to climb they do like to investigate great personality um, very very easy to work with gorgeous colors they come in an array as you can see all different colors all different sizes um, and are great to work with. There are four different subspecies of the Anateresa. There's the Spotted, the Children's, the Stimpsons, and then the Anthill or uh, Dwarf. All four are great. These two, the Spotted and the Children's, are probably the easiest to work with, so that's why we decided to work with this, um, with both of these species. And um, as you can see, they're just adorable, easy to handle, great, simple animals. And when they're full size, they're only eating adult mice. So think cost savings, big difference there. So these are our dwarf pythons.